get this out of my face. All right, I think that should be good. I decided to go with an AMA this week to give myself a little bit more time to code. And to make this a more enjoyable video for you to watch, I have included timestamps to every single question throughout this video. You can see those in the description or just look at the scrub bar and skip to any questions that you wanna hear answered because I don't want you to waste your time on the video listening to questions and answers that you don't care about. And I also wanna ask a favor. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you're not new around here, make sure the bell notification is on so you get notified every time I upload a video, which is typically about once a week. I mentioned I wanted to spend more time coding. So now that I'm gonna be coding a little bit more, a little bit more code will be in these videos, building a web application, and it's gonna be from the point of view as a software engineer. Whereas on the team, we have a data scientist and a project manager who is also a data scientist, but will be serving as a project manager. Let's get to the first question. Coding boot camps versus traditional degrees, just your general thoughts and experience with coworkers from either, thanks for all your work. Self-taught, before you do either, teach yourself. See if you like it, and beyond that, it's not either or, or which is better. It d really depends on the person and your goals and how you learn. My views on it, I know you said traditional degrees, I'm gonna zero in on a computer science degree, it's very broad. Even with the software development or engineering degree, while it will focus in on software engineering, it is still broad. You still have to satisfy all of those college requirements, give you a nice, well-rounded graduate, okay? However, with that degree, you are able to hop into many different jobs. You have a lot more opportunities. The reason for this is because you are decent or maybe even good at a lot of things. With a boot camp, you should come out of it really good at one thing. That's not a bad thing, by the way. But either way, you will be self-teaching along with getting taught by your teacher, your professor, your mentor, whatever you wanna call them. But either way, you'll be self-teaching along with being taught by your teacher. Have you ever used IntelliJ IDE for Java? That is what we're currently using at my college. Yes, I like IntelliJ. I use Eclipse, that's what I learned in my college. But the only reason I use that is because I'm better at it and haven't cared to learn IntelliJ. But when I hop back into Java, I'll probably go with IntelliJ simply because I like the user interface better. I don't have a CS degree, but I'm working on learning to be a software developer in my spare time. Beyond knowledge of languages and frameworks, what are some things I should be focusing on learning or practicing to be able to work in the field? Software process models and project management. This is how these big apps and projects are built and how they're managed. You need to know what it takes to be part of a software development team. Once you learn about that, move on to automated testing, documentation, builds, version control, config management, and issue tracking. These are what you need to know when you're actually building the software. How can I manage coding projects as a freelancer? Use something like GitHub for version control and a project management tool to help track your project. I used to use Jira and Trello, but I've moved everything over to Notion now. And I mean everything, everything from coding projects to video work to business tracking, which should help you organize your clients, dates, projects, all that stuff. I'll be making a video about it next month. Maybe I'll have some templates prepared for y'all. I've actually reached out to Notion to see if they want to sponsor the video, but either way, I'm going to be making it. I'm a web developer. Is it good to switch to AI? No. How do you get ideas for a project and know what dependencies to use? Basically, what is your process from idea to building in a nutshell? I'm in the process of doing this now with project engagement. In a nutshell, first, Figure out what stack you want to use. For this project, Java and Spring may have been a little bit more intricate than needed, but for some bigger projects, Mern just may not cut it. It helps to figure out what you want as part of the project. Make some mockups, figure out how you want it to look, and look into some dependencies for that stack. In my research into the Mern stack, I came across Nodemon. That's going to help me save some time when building the project, so I'm going to use that. Just follow along with the project on the channel. I'm going to do my best to track everything from conceptual conceptualization to coding and that should help answer your question better than my words ever could is youtube and your coffee company your main source of income or do you have any other freelance projects that you work on we're going to be here for a while answering this question the answer is yes youtube and everything within youtube is my main source of income i've decided to shut down my coffee company and i don't freelance anymore Allow me to lay everything out, starting with my uh, YouTube and my revenue streams. I have a handful of different revenue streams that all have to do with YouTube. And in no particular order, the first is AdSense. This is what YouTube pays me for the ads they show you on my videos. So if you get an ad at the beginning of the video or an ad like this, this is going to be really awkward if, 
if you didn't get an ad. But YouTube pays me 55% of what the advertiser pays them. YouTube's cut is 45%. Another stream of revenue, sponsored videos. Now this is broken up into two different categories. There's a dedicated video or a video integration. Dedicated videos are like what you saw last week with the Intel Evo series laptops. That is when the whole entire video somehow has to do with the brand who is sponsoring the video. Video integrations are where I make a video about whatever I want, like this one, and I pitch you on a brand for about one or two minutes somewhere in the video. Like when I talk about Western Digital and the most common mistakes made by new software engineers, the whole entire video isn't about Western Digital or hard drives, just a minute or two addresses that. But I always make sure that the topics are related, People who are interested in being software engineers have computers, so they're interested in hard drives. I'm very particular about the brands I work with. I get dozens of emails every single day from people wanting to sponsoring different videos. I turn down 99% of them for various different reasons, but that's how I go about sponsorships. And if you see a sponsorship on this channel, they typically gauge the performance based on how many people click the link in the description just so you know. Another stream of revenue, affiliate partnerships. Most notably, Algo Expert. They don't pay me for every single video mention. They pay me every month based on how many people purchase their product using my link and my discount code, which you can find in the description of my videos. I've also began working with Kite on an affiliate level. I haven't mentioned them in any previous video, but Kite is a AI powered code completion extension for like VS Code, IntelliJ, Atom, and a bunch of others. And since they're free, I obviously don't get a cut of the revenue like I do with Algo Expert. They pay me every time someone clicks on the link that I provide, which you can also find in the description. Those are my three main streams of revenue for YouTube right now. There are also two other potential uh, uh, revenue streams, merch and courses. I've always considered these two, but I just never pulled the trigger on it. For merch, I just couldn't find any designs that are cool, non-tacky, computer science or software engineering related designs. The furthest I've gone is actually hired a designer and gotten a, a, a design made. And uh, my idea here was I was going to create a hacker group. I was going to name the hacker group and put it where it says hacker. And uh, that just never happened. So my idea here was to add a little bit of lore to the channel last year where you got a little bit of, of a taste of it in my goodbye video. Think of F Society or Anonymous. I thought it would have been cool to have something like that, but we are that group. And well, also we don't commit crimes, so it's more of a representation than anything else. And I was going to create a giant puzzle like that of Cicada 3301, something that y'all would figure out. And I had this whole entire plan for those of you who could actually solve the puzzle. But that just never came to fruition, which means the merchandise just wouldn't have made sense. But let's forget about that for now. I'd love to bring it back up sometime in the future when I can actually get that puzzle made. But for now, it's not in the cards. I am currently working with a designer for cool, non-tacky computer science and software engineering merch. And this isn't even a money play. There's just no cool clothing for people who code. Like some things I like to do are surf or snowboard or fish or just anything outdoors. So when it comes to clothing, I can wear something and it expresses this is me. And it's not just a brand itself. You can be wearing something with, with a pheasant on the shirt because maybe you like to go pheasant hunting or you can wear something with a fish on it or, or someone surfing, something like that. And it just expresses more about you. Maybe you like space, so you have a shirt that has space on it or has a rocket ship on it. I want to do the same, but for coders. That's one of my goals for 2021, to create a clothing line or merch to allow us to express our interest in the field. And I'm not talking about something I turn coffee into code. <laughs> that's that's just tacky. I, I want something that is actually that I would wear. I'm not gonna wear that. Now as for courses, I've always considered making a Java web developer course. That's my expertise, but I just never got around to it. I didn't wanna be the person who just peddled courses all the time. And since I wouldn't be promoting it all the time, I don't know what the ROI would look on that. But I would like to share everything I learned and teach you all the skills that it takes to be a professional Java developer, but that's just not in the cars for right now. Now let's talk about my coffee company. First supply coffee, I shut it down. Here's the story. I launched it back in January, 2020. And it started off fairly well into the thousands in revenue. I didn't really do much other advertising because I quickly found out I didn't like doing this that much. I guaranteed freshly roasted coffee every single week. So every single week I would order the coffee. Sometimes it would be a little bit late because of the roaster, but then I'd have to go pick it up. 
I'd have to come back and pack all the orders, and then I'd have to go out and ship out all the orders. And then it was a culmination of I didn't really like to do this, I'd rather just code and make videos, so the less I promoted it, the less I would have to do it. That's a big brain move right there. But I, ha I had guaranteed freshly roasted coffee shipped out every single week. So the less I promoted it, the less orders I would get because people naturally wouldn't be hearing about it anymore, which means only a couple people would order some weeks. So if I had a week where only five people ordered coffee, I would do all of that work for five orders. And at that point, it just seemed like a waste of time. I, in all honesty, I don't really know what I was expecting. Like I knew all of this went into it, but it just wasn't as fun as I thought it was going to be. Sometimes you try something out, you realize you don't like it as much as you thought you would, so you quit. It's not bad to quit things as long as you realize that's something you don't want to do. And in all honesty, maybe if it was making $10,000 every single month, then maybe it would be a little bit more fun. But I wasn't willing to do the work to bring it to that point. I literally wanted the success of the business without putting in the work. And as we all know, that's not how things work. So a couple months ago, I said, forget it. I marked it as sold out and I'll be shutting down the website anytime, anytime now. But <laughs> y'all are gonna call me crazy on this one, but I don't like to have all my eggs in one basket, that being the, the YouTube basket. And I may have multiple streams of revenue in that basket, but it's still all linked to YouTube. Maybe some of you remember me talking about how I wanted to make First Supply Coffee an outdoors brand. Give it a bit of an identity. Well, as fate would have it, a buddy of mine actually had the same exact idea to build an outdoors brand. Without the coffee, of course. So we decided to go into business together. I'll show you a few of the designs on the screen, but a big part of my life and, and where I live is fishing, hunting, farming. And that is the identity, the idea behind this brand. It is called Tranquil, meaning a life free from disturbance. We plan to launch next month. We're just waiting on a few samples to arrive to ensure their quality and get a few pictures for the website. Not that y'all are our target audience, but I like to share things with y'all, so I'll let you know when we launch. Let's talk about freelancing. Something I've always dreamt of is starting my own dev agency. Building up from freelancing, freelancing and having so much business that I had to start hiring people on. So this year I've decided no more freelancing projects. I just want to build what I want. As many of you know, I'm working with a few others to build project engagement. I hope to have the first video out in about a month. It's not going to take that long to complete it, but with how my video schedule sits, that's where it's scheduled. What should students focus on outside of school? Learning new languages, personal projects. In regards to your studies, work on whatever you're passionate about. You're never going to learn more than when you're passionate about something. Now, if you're just talking about improving your grades, then work on projects outside of school that are using the same language as your school. So if your school teaches you Java, then make sure your side projects are Java. The reason being, it's better to be great at one than decent at many. Also, look ahead at your course material to prepare yourself for the next class. Will you focus on hacking content? No. I've always, and I mean always, been interested in hacking and cybersecurity, but I won't be getting to that this year. What non-tech skill helped you in software development? And what software-related skill turned out to be useful in everyday tasks? That's actually a really good question. My non-tech skill that I think helps within be being a software developer is being able to explain things like an idiot, or, or to be more precise, my communication skills. I can break down and repeat what I was just told to ensure I understand what is being asked of me, and I'm able to break things down and explain them in layman's terms for clients or end users. My software related skills that have helped me in real life are problem solving, organization, and breaking down big problems into small problems. Do you think it's useless to be experienced at programming at a young age since you'll learn it anyways in college? And someone else asked, hey, I'm 15 years old and I'm planning on becoming a software engineer. Is there anything I could do right now to help my career? These are related. They're young coders trying to figure things out. It's not useless to learn coding before college. The more prepared you are, meaning the more you know about coding computer science, the better you'll perform, the more you'll learn, and the more enjoyable it will be. And in order to help your career, learn how to code. If you already know how to code, get better. If coding interests you, who 
cares what's best for your job or best for college. Just let that passion, that enjoyment take you where it will. Hey, longtime fan. I'm a 16 year old programmer from Washington State looking to get into the industry for computer science. I've been doing hobby projects for the past three years and I've built up a substantial portfolio, but I find it hard finding opportunities that are looking for young developers like myself. What would you recommend for your younger programmers and how can I get my name out there for potential looks by Fortune 500 companies? I've personally made national level competitions and tournaments from my experience, but I'm unsure where to go from here. Keep up the great videos. If your portfolio is impressive, your code is neatly displayed on GitHub and your resume is being catered for each particular company in which you're applying, then you have to go a less traditional route. Make sure your LinkedIn is up to date, it links to your portfolio and your GitHub, and start messaging people. Mention a few of your credentials, not a big list, but enough to catch their eye and explain your goal for messaging them in as few words as possible. When the traditional methods aren't working, you gotta think outside the box. Is working as a software engineer extremely hectic and brain exploding nonstop working day and night? Brain exploding, yes. Hectic, at times. Nonstop day and night, no. If you have a job that is requiring you to work 12 hours every day, find a new job. How do you choose between being a software dev and data analyst or scientist? What are major differences like programming language, lifestyle? I'm finding it hard to choose my major. Plus, how do I know what language does an employer expect? How to prepare myself? Like, do I want to be a master of one or average at many? First off, data analysts and data scientists, not the same thing. Second, you can see what languages are used by what companies by looking at their website, looking at their employee skills on LinkedIn, or simply by looking at their job postings. So figure out what you wanna do, at which company you wanna work, and then do your research on what you need to learn to land a job at that company. Master one, not average at many. And lastly, my next week's video will answer that exact question. I'm having a data scientist on to talk about what it's like to be a data scientist from his perspective versus what it's like to be a software engineer from mine. To ensure you don't miss it, make sure you're subscribed and click the little bell so you're notified when I upload that video. While you're down there, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. See you next week.